back to the golf mix. We have a name. I asked you to vote on Instagram. You can see the results here. This is the name that you chose. So this show is now called The Golf Mix. And we've got loads coming up this month. All these that you can see down here at the bottom. And please make sure you stay tuned to the end as well. We've got an incredible finish. Let's start with what's your handicap. And let's see if you can do better than me. Right, next up we've got Wayne Hartley. Um, great setup, love that. Looks like he's got a hybrid. Um, the big difference I saw here, I'll just play the swing through, first of all. So again, pretty good looking golf swing. The big thing I would say, have a look at the club face here in the takeaway. Slightly turned down, I like that. When we get to that same point in the downswing, club face is laid back. So the club face is quite a long way open, which means that it's not necessarily gonna hit to the right because he could release it with his hands, but it's gonna be more difficult to time. So that's gonna be difficult for control. And he also mentions that he struggles a little bit with distance. And when you get to the top, I'd like to say a little bit more turn through the upper body, which is gonna help that. So for me, club face gets a little bit out of the way down. That's gonna compromise his direction. And I can definitely see that he might lack a bit of distance. Handicap wise, Oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go like 14. Nine, sorry Wayne, was it Wayne? Wayne? Wayne, sorry Wayne, I got you a little bit higher than that. So nine is good. I think we can get you a little bit lower with a few changes. In terms of distance, you mentioned that you lack a little bit of distance. Definitely looks to me as if you're a little bit under turned. So I'll be looking for you to just do a few rehearsals and just see if you can get the feeling that this club works a little bit more over your trail knee. And to do that, you might have to feel like you use a little bit more hip rotation. It's gonna feel a little bit different in your feet, but I'd love you to make a bigger turn, which is gonna allow your arms to travel a little bit further. Definitely can help with distance. So nine, I was way out, six out, sorry Wayne, but I reckon you can get lower with a few changes. Good swing. Right, next up, we've got Ross Bertie here with the driver on what looks like a great golf course. So I'm very jealous of him at the moment because it's freezing here. So let's play the swing through. Now Ross said he struggles a little bit with left with the driver, so driver going a little bit left. You can see overall, that's a great golf swing. Really, really good, nice shapes, nice angles. Top of the golf swing, club face slightly closed. So already starting to think that maybe this will go a little left. And then on the way down, he basically gets the, the trail arm stuck a little bit behind him, you can see here. And then when he tries to sort of get that to catch up and he sort of flings that right arm down and out, that's when the face starts to go over. So I can definitely see a few going left. So we'll give him a few ideas on what he can work on there. Um, and also takeaway gets a little bit rolled inside. I wouldn't be as concerned about that, but we'll give him some ideas on that. Um, I'm gonna go, I mean, this look, it's a good swing. It's gotta be, it's gotta be around about the high single figures, 10. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 10. I'm so sorry, Ross. I'm so, it's because you'd said you hit it left. If you hadn't said that, I'd have given you a much lower handicap. Right, eight out, way out. Sorry, Ross. Um, I mean, great swing, great handicap. So uh, clearly my eye needs a bit of work there. Right, so I'd be looking for you to, you know, certainly at the top, get the, the club base a little bit more match that lead arm. Now, whether we did that with a change of grip, I can't see the grip from that video. And then on the way down, I'd be really looking for you to try and work on getting this elbow a little bit more in front of you. For me, the reason you struggle is, number one, that club face is closed, but number two, this elbow gets stuck to your, stuck behind you. And then as you're coming in, it has to then sort of fire and catch up. And when it's making this movement, the face is going over and it's going left. I'd love to get your elbow a little bit more in front of you to help you work through the board and stabilize that club face a little bit. So I apologize for getting your handicap way out. Hope those tips are gonna help and you can get down to scratch. Sorry, Ross. So now it's time for the lesson tea and we've got a very special guest joining me, sort of joining me, not actually joining me, but just using some photos of his golf suit. It's Tiger Woods. So we're going to look at two areas of Tiger's golf swing and pull out a couple of things that you can learn. So first of all, the takeaway, which you can see over here. Now, the things that I really notice when I look at this part of Tiger's golf swing is just how much rotation he's got through his upper body and through his hips and his legs. And what that does is it allows him to keep the club head slightly out in front of the hands. Getting the body to rotate early is key because if we don't rotate the body early, we tend to use a lot more of arm rotation. We tend to find the grip moves away, the club head dives in, the shoulders turn flat, and you've got your golf swing off to a terrible start. So what we can learn from Tiger is take the golf club, place it in your belly button, take a setup, and learn what it feels like to move the golf club away with lots of body rotation, like I'm doing here, and keeping the club outside of your hands. That's gonna be so important for getting more rotation 
more length in the golf swing and probably a little bit more speed. Now the second part, delivery. Take a look at that position. If you can get anywhere near that, you are gonna be a great golfer. The key things I like here is where the club head is in relation to his hands. If you remember the takeaway, we said the club head was slightly outside the hands. At delivery, it's completely different. The club head is behind the hands and his hands are more out. So what you can start to learn from that is working up to the top and just rehearsing down where your golf club is not parallel to your target line, it's actually slightly inside, as you can see here. Right arm is nicely bent, hands are nicely away from my body, and the key thing, club head behind the hands. What that does for Tiger is it allows him to deliver the club with speed and power, and if you are a slicer, a fader, so when it's the ball super low, this is going to be brilliant for you because it's going to help you launch it higher and probably work towards more of a draw pattern. Right, let's see how close I can get to Tiger Woods' goal sing. I'm going to guess not very close, but let's have a go. Well, it was a nice high draw, but I don't think I'm quite as good as Tiger Woods just yet. Welcome back to the Golf Lab. So today we're talking all about rough and how you can control your performance from the rough. I am an expert in playing at a rough, I've got plenty of experience. So we're gonna look at what effect it has on your golf ball when you're on the course, and it's gonna help you make some better decisions. How are we gonna do this? Well, you'll notice I'm holding some tape. We haven't got any rough in here, but we can simulate the effects of rough. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit some shots with my seven iron, normal seven iron, get some data, look at the ball flight, see where we are. We're then gonna take some tape and we're gonna place it across the face, just one layer of tape. And that's gonna simulate kind of really thin rough. So maybe wispy grass where you miss the fairway, but it's not too detrimental. It doesn't look like particularly thick grass. Then what we're gonna do, take that tape and we're gonna literally just layer and layer and layer and layer and layer and really build that club up. And that's gonna simulate really thick rough where I tend to find myself off the fairway really starting to replicate loads of grass between the club and the ball. And again, we're gonna see what happens to the ball flight. So three different tests, and we're gonna track the results through Trackman. Now, before we get started, I have a pretty good idea what's gonna happen. I think some of the results might surprise you, but before we go through the data and have a look, get down to the comments box, let me know what you think is gonna happen when we start to simulate some thin rough and then move on to some thick rough. Get down in there, let me know what you think. So there's my seven iron, one layer of tape on the face to simulate that really thin rough grass between the club and the ball. Let's hit some shots, let's see what the ball flight does. I've got an idea what it will do, but we'll check. So yeah, that was uh, different. We'll go through that data a little bit later. So now we're gonna take that masking tape and we're just gonna build this up and build this up, put loads of tape on it to simulate that thick, thick rough. Big differences, huge differences, just visually without any data, big differences in the ball flight. So let's go and see what the data showed and let's see whether I was right and whether you were right. Data's in, it's on the screen, let's go through it. Start off, stock seven iron is on the screen there. 180 yards carry, launch angle 19.8, ball speed 123, spin rate 5,000. Now that spin rate is actually quite low for my seven iron, but it's the golf balls that we use at the academy. They're range balls, they're designed for durability, they've got hard covers. So they tend to spin quite a bit less, but it's the same golf ball throughout the test, so we can still do a pretty good comparison. So there's my standard seven iron, pretty much what I'd expect, carry 180. So what happened when we put that tape on to simulate that first scenario? Carry went to 209 yards, almost 30 yards further through the air, off pretty much the same ball speed, 124.8. So no change in ball speed, but 30 yards carry. Why? Well, launch angle went up to 23, but the spin rate, that's the big one, from 5,000 down to 2,000. That shot is what I would call a flyer. I'm sure you've heard that term before, you've watched some golf and you've seen them talk about it on the TV, they've hit a flyer, they've airmailed the green. You might have even experienced it yourself. You take a seven iron from the rough and you just go straight over the green and you wonder why on earth it went that far or how you've hit your seven iron that far, this is why. As soon as we put something between the club and the ball, we can often reduce spin, we reduce friction. We spoke about that in episode one. That's what happened. That simulation there, there was not enough rough to slow the ball down off the face. But what it did is because there was things on the face in the grooves, it reduced the spin, it reduced the friction. So on the course, 
that's gonna go miles. And I would play for that. If I'm in a situation where I know there's long grass, but I don't feel it's gonna slow my club, I don't feel it's gonna slow the ball down, I'll often play for a flyer. That's what you get. And visibly, that was very different. It took off higher, and it almost looked like a driver flight, that kind of rainbow flight that we see with a driver. Terrible into the greens, because it's just gonna land and kick on. But when I'm in that situation, I kinda need to know that's gonna happen. Right, let's look at the next scenario. Loads of tape on. Carry goes from 180 to 175. Bit more predictable, you probably got that. So ball speed down almost five miles an hour to 118. So ball comes off the face slower, simply because there's debris, grass, or in this case, tape between the club and the ball. So we lose some ball speed. However, they're only equated to five yards. So not a huge amount. The reason we lose a lot of distance we're in the rough is, yes, the ball comes off the face slower, as we see there, but also the club in the rough has to go through a lot of that grass before it actually hits the golf ball. So in reality, the club has got far less speed impact because of what it's had to go through to get to the ball. That's the reason that you lose a lot of distance. The fact that there's grass between the club and the ball might only cost you five, five yards over 180. So we have to factor those things in. Going through the rough and that lower ball speed means I'm gonna to have to take one, possibly even two more clubs from a really thick line. But when it's thin, sometimes you can even go one less and play for that flyer. So when you're in the rough, it's a variable. It's a variable that we can't accurately guess and predict, but we can sort of make some assumptions based on the information in this video. I would basically be looking at the information here and using that to influence what I do when I'm in those different situations and you hopefully can do the same. So, hopefully that was interesting. I'd love to get your thoughts on below whether you were correct or whether you've actually hit a flyer in the past, whether you've experienced it. It'd be great to get your input um, and see how many of you actually got that correct. So this would be pretty accurate for irons. Generally, a draw goes further than a fade. And it's all because when we're shaping the ball, the club face is not aligned exactly the same as the path. We have the face open or closed. So for a draw shot, the face has to be closed to the path. And when we're hitting a fade shot, the face has to be open to the path. Now we know that when we close the face, so for a draw, we also take loft off the golf club. And when we're fading it with an open face, we're adding loft. So if I took my eight iron, when I draw the golf ball, it's gonna have lower lofted impact than when I fade the golf ball. So effectively, a draw with an eight iron is gonna come out more like a seven iron flight, and a fade with an eight iron is gonna come out more like a nine iron flight. So we're gonna see quite a big difference in how far the ball carries. But, not many people know this, if you wanna know how to hit the ball the furthest, well, let me show you how to do that. So this is called using just what you've got to hand. This is a, a TheraBand which I've had in my golf bag. But I've secured it to the ground here, and this is representing my draw shot. So it starts out to the right and then curves back, and it reaches the kind of tee peg here. But if we took any draw shot, doesn't matter what it is, the ball has to travel in a certain distance to end up there. If I straightened out that ball flight, look what happens. If I turn my draw into a straighter shot, I've suddenly lengthened the distance. So if you want to hit the ball furthest, work towards a straight shot. A draw generally will go further than a fade, but a straight shot is the most efficient flight and that will give you the most distance. Right, Di Zato wants to know why he's so horrible at golf. Well, unfortunately, I don't know because he didn't send me any swings or give me any information. But Di Zato, if you get in touch with me, I'm going to give you full access to my website where there's a training course on there to help with your fitness, your driving, your short game, everything. So get in touch with me and I'll give you free access to my website. Right, so this is going to be a pretty popular one. How to increase club head speed with the driver. We kind of all want to do that. So we're going to talk about basically priming the backswing, giving yourself more chance of club head speed. So this is something, well, I actually need to come up with the name for this drill, but this is a, a kind of exercise that I call club head stuck to the ground. I want you to bear with me. Imagine when you take a setup, imagine that the bottom of your club is stuck to the ground quite a lot. So you actually have to remove that club from the ground. And what it's basically going to do for you is it's going to mean that your takeaway and the start of your swing is a lot more aggressive. You're having to use your body a lot more. You're having to push off the ground because effectively, if we want to increase club head speed, we have to get more energy into the goal swing early on. The bonus to that is if we get more energy into the goal swing early on, the chances are the club is going to travel further and we know that when the club travels further, when the hands travel further, we've got more time to create speed. So if you want more club head speed, make the takeaway more aggressive, but make sure that is with the body and almost pushing up and away from the target and also lengthen that backswing. I think, well, I know from experience that those two things will give you more club head speed. 
Right, best golf-related exercise. Now, I'm no expert in this field, unfortunately, but I know someone who is, Joe Macro. I've done some work with him. Great guy and great for this area of the game, golf fitness, he's your man. So there's a course on my website, you can see it down here. He's done that for me, it's a 30 day follow along training course, which is gonna get your body in the best possible shape to play your best golf. So the person who asked this question, drop me a message and I'll get you free access to this course. Now it's time for the live lesson. So let's first of all talk about Rich. He was a 25 handicap and not been playing golf that long, 18 months into it. But he was basically struggling with a little bit of inconsistency. He'd hit a few right, he'd hit a few left. Didn't really have a shot pattern that he particularly struggled with, but he just wanted to basically keep improving and, and keep moving in the right direction. So we took a look at his iron swing and there was definitely some things there that I felt he could work on. So let's jump over to the studio and run through his golf swing uh, and what we decided to do with Rich. So this is Rich's golf swing. So we've got the swings on the screen, got the data, and I kind of went through everything with him and explained it. So let's quickly talk about what we did. Rich hit some exceptional shots. For someone in his handicap playing the game for that length of time, he hit some really good shots. With Rich, it wasn't really a case of getting him to hit the ball better. It was about really eliminating those bad shots and getting the good shots to happen more often, a lot more about consistency. We saw a bit of inconsistency in attack angle, in face angle, and when we looked at some blast data, we saw the tempo was fluctuating from swing to swing, which gave him some sort of results that we didn't want. So what do we do with the golf swing? Well, you see on here on the left, first thing I wanted to do was change his posture a little bit. Um, I felt like he was sitting into the shot a little bit more. His backside was a little bit too far outside his heels, and that didn't really allow him to move the body as well as we'd like. And then over on the right, I wanted him just to widen that stance a little bit. Now, if I go to impact, um, and we look on the, on the left, he was very square with his body at impact. And then when we look on the right hand side, I appreciate it goes blurry, his arms tended to kind of buckle this way a little bit. He didn't have a lot of room and a lot of his inconsistencies were due to that. But on the golf swing on the left, what we see in his transition, he's very, very good up to the top. His swing shape was fantastic, but his club shaft steepened significantly in transition. You can see that on the left hand side. So as soon as he had that steeper club shaft in transition, it made him very difficult to actually use the body more through impact. And because he couldn't use the body, that's why he tended to get a bit stuck. His arms kind of lost their structure and there was a little bit of inconsistency there. Now, I would say that's a relatively easy change to do, as in we just did it, but he's not gonna feel comfortable for, for a while, okay? That looks much, much better, okay? Probably doesn't feel better, but it feels worse, but okay, go ahead and make a, make a swing from there. Yeah, good shot. Okay, right, you're gonna bring this in. Have you used one of these? No. If you have, it's probably cleaner than that one. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Okay, impact bag. And I want you to, with a fair bit of force, okay, do what you would do to basically turn out the way and hit the bag. Perfect. Now, same again, set up. Now, I'm gonna make this pretty extreme, so I apologize for that. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, which felt easier? This one, first one, okay? As soon as you get the club more behind you, you're gonna be basically using a lot more of this. As soon as that club is in there, your brain probably went, hang on, <laughs> and you kind of had to go almost do these jumping moves. You're not here, but it was just highlighting the fact that as soon as you get to the top and it gets a little bit steep, you're less likely to move these. So we've got to go slightly better here, which is gonna basically open up the opportunity for you to use your legs. Okay, and we've got to try and basically feel at the top that the club gets a little bit more, what you feel is the club head is more outside your heels. What we don't want is that club head to be more above your head. Now again, I'm making these far more extreme, but if you get that club above your head and shoulder, when you start down, you're too steep, and it's back into what we just did with that bag where you don't feel you can use the, the legs. Yeah. We've got to get you to feel like you're more here. Okay, so take your setup. Okay, so you're gonna go a little bit more here. Okay, perfect, just clip it. Very nice, really good. So I think your body's moving better already there. So go to the top and hold it for me. Okay, so imagine you're in a clock, 12 is there, one, two, three, six is directly behind you. Okay, five would be like there somewhere, okay? What we saw in transition is you've gone up to the top, but then you've kind of kicked the club this way a little bit. Yeah. Okay, not intentionally, just the feeling. So what you've got to try and feel now is as you go to the top, you've got to feel like as you start your transition, you've got the club head going down to what you feel is this five o'clock position. 
Can I use you for every lesson that I do? <laughs> that was a fluke. <laughs> Can't be a fluke if you do it twice. <laughs> Again, it's better. There's your, yeah. there's your sort of start of your dowsing. I feel like I've rushed it a little bit. Yeah, but you're now you're starting to get, so your legs are already back to square there. This is, this is starting to get a lot better. Now, because you're changing, I won't say change a lot, but I mean, look at where you're already in there. You're starting to get a lot more yeah. clearance of the body and you're not actually focusing on the body. I mean, you might be a little bit, but the, the main goal is put the club in a position where the body is forced to, to do something different. Really good, good swing. Right, this is a new section. We didn't have this in episode one. This is called Voices in Golf. This is when I bring onto the show people who I believe have got a really valuable voice within the game of golf. This week, this is a good friend, great golf coach, Alistair Davis. Alistair has been coaching for a number of years now. He's got a really great track record of coaching some players right to the elite level. So based on the test that we did earlier, the golf lap and the rough, we're gonna get Alistair to talk us through how he would and how you should approach shots when you're in the thick rough. Right, Al, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Now I know you're an incredible driver of the golf ball. You never miss fairway, so I've intentionally caused you to miss the fairway. I've placed that ball in what I would consider to be a pretty tough lie. We've spoken earlier in this video about how rough kind of slows the club down and, and impacts that. So what's the first thing you're gonna do when you kind of walk up to your golf ball and, and kind of take a look at the situation? First thing I would do, Chris, is very much assess what's needed from the shot and then the lie. So the lie will dictate then whether, what I can do with the ball, whether I can advance it to the green or it's gonna be a layup or just basically a simple chip out. Um, to be fair, this lie isn't terrible, but there is some grass behind the ball. I tried which to is make key. it terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think if, if we were riding your driving, it might be a bit worse <laughs> than this. Um, but yeah, it's not terrible. So with this shot in hand, we got obviously about 175 yards to go to the green, but there is a lot of risks down by the green because of the water. Yeah. But we could potentially get this close to the green in terms of yardage, right? But obviously the rough is gonna impact the impact conditions and impact how the ball will wanna fly. Yeah. Um, so the first things I consider is what club can I get to the ball with that lie? And then whether it's worth the risk in terms of the shot. So for me, with the water on the right, I probably would still probably lay up on this shot. Okay. But if we were going to try and advance it, obviously we'd just use a different club but play it the same yeah. way from a technical aspect. Okay. So, I mean, that's definitely an important point, you know, from here, yeah, you're looking at situations and layup is definitely an option. But if I'm saying to you, right, that's the lie, you're in the rough, you want to try and get it to the green, what are the, some of the things that you're going to do in setup, swing, or whatever it may be, to try and deal with that situation and ultimately still hit the green and reg? So basically, the, the longer grass behind the ball is going to impact how the club is delivered. What it tends to do is obviously tangle with the hosel of the clubs of this part of the club here and it tends to want to close the face and close it down that's going to make the ball want to go left so we're going to have to aim right to compensate for that and in order to make it less disruptive i'm going to move the ball further back in my stance to try and attack it with a steeper angle of approach so it means then the club's not coming in so low and impacting too much of the grass behind the ball so we're trying to get the best possible strike we can from the situation and then allow compensate if you like for the ball turning more right to left so I'm gonna aim right open the face or aim the club a little bit more to the right and then move the ball back in the stance those are the things I'm gonna change pretty much a set up and probably if the lies bad a little bit more pressure on the lead foot too okay. those are the adaptations I would make at a setup okay go ahead and take your set to that one then because okay. You know, I guess what you've said there is that you're accepting that there's going to be grass between the club and the ball, yep. but you're trying to do some things in setup which reduces the amount of, of, of kind of grass. So is that your is that your setup you would adopt from there? Yeah, that's the setup I would take. I would have the ball slightly further back in stance again. This is a mid iron, so I'm having it slightly right of centre okay. towards the trail side and putting a little bit more pressure on the leaf foot, as we said, keeping the hand still forward to opposite the inside of my left thigh, and I'm having the club face pointing to the right and slightly open at address. Into, in, into my intended target. Okay, and then once you've got that set up, any in-swing kind of principles, any changes, anything you think about? Yeah, I definitely try and feel there's probably gonna be a little bit more radial deviation on the backswing, a bit more wrist cock, if you like, thumbs up. Yep. Just again, get that swing plane and get that angle of approach a little bit steeper. Okay. Again, to just not get the club so disrupted by that long grass. So we're trying to get, you know, the cleanest contact we possibly can, yep. accepting that it's not gonna be clean. But if we had like a real kind of wide arc here, I'm gonna to have to have really lots of swing speed, lots yeah. of muscles to be able to get that ball to move forward. So we wanna, you know, take out the disruption as much as we can, 
and trying to bounce the ball as far down the fairway as we can. Obviously, in this case, if we're trying to get on the green. Yeah. We're going to take a club that'll go probably slightly more yardage than we need because we're going to allow for a little bit of yardage to be lost. If it's obviously only a slight bit of rough, we'll probably get a flyer. So then we, we spoke about that already in the, in the video, yeah, we covered that exactly. So we wouldn't need that then. So in this case, when it gets really thick, you probably need more club if you're trying to get to the green and you're going to need to hit it quite hard. So feeling very kind of loaded in the swing, very curtailed in the fall through. So the fall through is not going to be as long as normal. But is that something you're trying to do or is that more a result of how the club's being delivered to the ball? Exactly. It's a result of what the rough's going to do to the ball. And also because I'm loading the weight, the pressure more on the front foot and yeah. swinging a bit steeper, the club's going to probably, or should do, travel a bit more into the ground, but around the ball. And that's going to make it harder to get through the golf ball. I want to see one now. Okay. I've got, I've got three golf balls here because I'm not expecting you to hit a perfect one straight away. This is how confident I am in Al's ability to get this on the green. But okay. Pretty good from there. It's bang on line, so it's, it's curved. I could have got a better contact, but it's yeah. bang on line. Thank you very much, Al. We're going to uh, get you to hit one more whilst I just inform these of all your uh, social handles, so your YouTube, um, all that kind of stuff is detailed down below, so make sure you go and check Al out. Um, certainly an expert from the rough, as you've seen there, <laughs> <laughs> but also a great coach as well. Right, Rich, could be yours. This, I mean, this literally came out two days ago. You actually play a telemade driver, don't you? I do, yes. Not this one. No. This would be nice, wouldn't it? Addition to the golf bag. So this is the new Stealth 2, just come out. That's the leaderboard. There's me on there, I can't be on it. Tom is there. So obviously you want to be ahead of Tom, don't you? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the year, if no one hits it one four three, the closest person wins it. But if you hit it one four three today, you win the driver. So what, what, what would you be happy with? On the course, if you've got one forty three, what's are you happy with five yards less, five yards long? Ten yards. Ten yards, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so fourteen yards is Tom. So I guess you'd yeah. be happy with inside of that, wouldn't you? Of course, yeah. Okay, and club of choice? I'm gonna go eight iron with all your swing changes. Hopefully it should. It should so what would it have been before? Seven maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm in between. I'm not really, okay. I'm so not it's really, a good I'm not really found that comfortable okay. distance yet, to be honest. Good eight. All right, best of luck, go for it. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand here and half hand it to you. Let's see it. Tell you what, you gotta be thinking that's good. I've hidden it off that screen. <laughs> it's on my phone. 148. He's done it! He's done it! No way! <laughs> no way! That is a brand new, not that one, because I've hit that one, you're gonna have a fully fitted, brand new ah. Stealth 2 driver. Oh. Mate, that is impressive. I knew, as soon as you it. hit that, that was like... I thought it was going along. On the money, 143.7. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's so you've had a free golf lesson, and now you're going to have a brand new Stealthy driver. That is absolutely amazing. Can't really believe it. Look at that. That's incredible. Amazing. Honestly. Absolutely amazing, mate. Amazing. I wasn't sure whether we'd give one away. Well, I knew we'd give one away at the end of the year, but to win it in the second episode, phenomenal, mate. Really happy with Honestly, it. Honestly, can't believe Over it. Over the moon. Can't believe it. Enjoy it. I'll make sure we get one out to you and enjoy it. Safe to say, I didn't see that coming. I mean, this video series, I've planned to this for a year, um, and TaylorMade said they'd put up a driver, so massive thanks to TaylorMade, but when I spoke to them, we both said on the phone, realistically, it's not gonna happen. No one's gonna hit the ball exactly that yardage after a golf lesson with all that pressure to win a driver, but Rich, what an incredible shot that was. I mean, he was nervous, as you can imagine, but as soon as he hit it, I knew it was going to be close, and then it was just great when I looked down and saw that number. So he's going to be getting a driver. I'll get a picture from Rich when he gets it, and I'll put it in the next episode next month so we can see. But again, thank you to TaylorMade. Thank you for watching this episode. All of your feedback is massively valuable to me, so please get down to the comments box. Anything you liked, anything you didn't like, any features you think we could add, take away, all going to help me making better videos going forward. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next month.